Well, hello, everyone. I just wanted to stop in before we begin our actual show this week to do a little follow up on uh, what was discussed last week in that little message that I put out, uh, if you recall, from last week. And Michelle is with me this time, which is excellent. Hello, Michelle. Hi, everybody. Hi, sweetie. Um, and she has, she wants to talk a little bit about her mother. And I, I thought that this would be a great time to do this before we begin the show. So Michelle, please take it away. Well, thank you, sweetie. Um, and first of all, I wa- really want to take this opportunity to express my tremendous appreciation for all the outpouring of love. So many of you sent, um, you know, and we got it from all, all of our social media sites and our email sites. So Thank you, everybody, who, who really took time out of your day to send us such warm regards. And I just want you to know and be assured that it really meant a lot. It really helped a lot. You know, the passing of my mom was is a difficult thing to still get my uh, head around. But knowing that we have such tremendous, wonderful, positive, loving people out there who interact with us is just phenomenal and and i really can't even put into words how much that means and i just want to say thank you Uh, i also wanted to take just a couple moments to talk a little bit about my mom only because you know she really was the one that inspired me to love disney and disney world and and everything about the company and the movies um and you know in looking back and and fondly remembering things that she really enjoyed being just in the special place of Walt Disney World. Um, You know, her most cherished experiences were the ones that she shared with families and friends. And and some of her favorites that I remember um, were afternoon tea at the Grand Floridian. That was always so special to her and special to us, Um, whether it was just, you know, something that we planned ahead and made special reservations for or if we took our chances sometimes and just in between visiting the park stopped in there whatever um, it was always great fun just to have that that moments those moments to just share together Um, she really loved the sci-fi dine-in that was I think one of her favorite restaurants at the park she always just thought it was hilarious and especially when we were with family and and she always even would talk about some of those experiences um and of course and i and i think i've mentioned this to some of you as i responded um the top of the world lounge she felt like such a vip when she had the opportunity to join us up there you know getting a chance to watch the fireworks from up there you know, uh, having a little cocktail or a glass of wine, whether it was with a cheese platter or I was just blown away one day, one night when we were up there together and she goes, let's have that seven layer cake, you know, <laughs> let's just do it. And, you know, it, she just really uh, brought out the fun in those experiences. Um, like many of us, the holidays were her favorite time to visit. Uh, and when I was actually living in Florida, Every year, she and I would start the holiday season with a visit to the Candlelight Processional at Epcot, you know, and and she felt like that was really the way to kick off the holidays, and I totally agree with that. And her favorite festival was always the Flower and Garden Festival at Epcot. Um, She really loved the topiaries. I mean, she always got a kick out of them. you know, and, and all the aspects of the festival, but that was actually her favorite part of it. And, and it was great to see that uh, she really appreciated what Disney was trying to do with Flower and Garden, right? You know, um, and as I mentioned, I really appreciate that she introduced me to Walt Disney World as a child. Um, you know, she really showed me how that can be fun. And as I grew up and matured, our appreciations were more in sync with the the experiences that we like to take together. And um, these are memories that I rely on, especially now during this very tough time. And so I just want to, you know, share that with you all. She was a special lady. Um, This was a tragedy. And I, again, can't thank you all enough for your outpouring and expressions of love to us. Uh, I, we wouldn't have time to name. I couldn't believe how many of you um, took the time 
to really send us those those warm those warm messages and thank you so very much yes uh, thank you dearly to everybody the, like you mentioned uh, too many to name here because right. there were just so many notes that came in and they were heartfelt and wonderful and from some people that we you know didn't had never even interacted with right. before um, it, it was just really really special and did help uh, us to get through uh, you know a, a tough time you know that we're still dealing with mm-hmm. right now but you know what um, we're moving forward and we'll never forget your mom she's a special lady she's yep. a wonderful lady she will always be a part of our life and she will always be in a little way a part of this podcast but we're going to move forward today and uh, get on with a regular show <laughs> Hello again and welcome to another episode of the Hyperion Adventures Podcast. I'm Tom. As always, I'm with my gorgeous, wonderful, <laughs> spectacular, hardworking, <laughs> Disney Parks loving wife yeah, and co-host, Michelle. Absolutely. Thank you. Hi, everybody. So good to have you with us. We are recording this episode on Sunday, August 1st, 2021. We're in August, a brand wow. new month. Yeah. Hard to believe, right? It, it is. I can't believe that it is August 1st. I mean, part of it, too, is I haven't been keeping up with the dates of the <laughs> week, even the days of the week lately. Um, Why with, is that? <laughs> I know, right? With all that's been going on. And so it, I, I don't think it was until yesterday uh, when we returned back home that, and we were at the grocery store and I was looking at the date some fruit was packed and I was like, July 31st. How could that have been packed on July 31st? Oh, wait, that was yesterday. <laughs> that was the day. And it was like, wow, I just can't believe the next day is going to be August 1st. Yeah, it is crazy. Into August, um, just zooming by. The yeah. summer is zooming by. But we appreciate that you joined us today. In the future, you can find us most everywhere you get podcasts. However, the very best place to find us is on our own website, HyperionAdventuresPodcast.com. And while you're there... We sure hope you would sign up for our newsletter. Please sign up for the newsletter. We didn't release one this week, uh, this last week, but we will have a brand new newsletter coming out this week for you. And it's just another way to be involved in the Hyperion Adventures podcast world. That's right. And just as we've mentioned in the past, it's uh, we don't share your email address with anybody. Nope. Just for us to get you that uh, newsletter out on a mostly weekly basis. And like I said, we will have a brand new one out for you this week. Another way to interact with us is on social media. Please follow us on Twitter at Hyperion Podcast, Facebook, Instagram, and Pinterest at Hyperion Adventures Podcast. We do have a fun little little Hyperion Adventurers Facebook group where we're just kind of sharing Disney positive stuff and we hope you'll join us there. All you got to do is do a search for Hyperion Adventurers and join the Facebook group really easy and we'd love to have you join in the fun along with us. Right and we just it's just so wonderful and warm people sharing things sharing some of their memories some of their upcoming events um some people ask questions so it's it's a great group yeah we want you to just come in there have some positive fun share your hyperion adventure whatever you have planned whatever you have already completed uh whatever it is we all want to share in that joy with you on that Facebook group. Uh, you can also find us on YouTube. We do put, release most of these episodes kind of in an audio slash video format. Uh, you can find us there by just doing a quick search for Hyperion Adventures podcast. Hit subscribe and you'll know whenever we have a new video. And if you ever want to contact us for any reason, please hit us up at our Gmail account, Hyperion Adventures podcast at gmail.com. Right. We love hearing from you all. And uh, as we mentioned in the intro, thank you to all of you who wrote in emails to us um, wishing us well and thank you. 
Yes, thank you so very much for all, everything that's been, for all the time that you, we've interacted right. with you, but especially what's happened within the last week or so. Uh, also, please check out our Patreon page. We'd love to be have you as a member of that, get some special swag out of it, plus kind of help us just improve this show, get some new equipment and so forth, so with our sound will be even better uh, going forward. All you need to do is go to patreon.com slash Hyperion Adventures Podcast, and then you can just pick whichever tier you want. They, we have tiers starting as low as two dollars per month, uh, going on up with some special Disney dishes blog stuff <laughs> going on. And for some of you out there, so uh, please just check that out. Right, we really appreciate those of you who have already joined. Too. Yes, uh, thank you so much for those of you already involved. So now on to this week's show. We have lots of stuff for you this week, including we checked out Jungle Cruise yeah. last night, the brand new Disney filmed. We're going to give you a very quick spoiler-free review of that movie the list of walt disney world dining spots that will soon be reopening increased yet again this week we'll share with you what new dining locations will be opening up soon at the most magical place on earth (laughs) i we're talking about so many different disney parks this week i forgot for a second there and we also received some more details of the hot spots if you are 18 or older that you might be able to enjoy next summer aboard the disney wish there's some cool stuff to talk about there and i'm looking forward to sharing that uh, with you all but let's get to our main topic of the week So yes, this week's main topic is going to be, well, it's going to be a two-part thing. We're kind of combining what our last, our two episodes were going to be, last week's episode and this week's episode, uh, because within the last couple weeks, we paid visits to the Disneyland Resort and a short visit to the Walt Disney World Resort. Right. And some really special things happened. And some really special things happened. So we'll start over where we began earlier this week. Uh, Before we went to Florida, we did visit the Disneyland Resort, which was a lot of fun. We took advantage of that brand new California ticket deal. And we actually have a couple more (laughs) reservation days to use up here in the next couple months. But uh, uh, we had a lot of fun out at Disneyland. Almost definitely. We did uh, the California Adventure theme park uh our plans were to go both some things changed (laughs) Uh uh-huh but um we did get an awesome day at disney california adventure yeah so we went up on sunday uh july 18th up to the disneyland resort um You know, some things were going on, but we decided that there was nothing we could do besides at that moment, besides for go up. We already had plans. We had hotel reservations. Mm -hmm. We had some DVC points that we needed to use up. Uh, So we put them towards the just staying at the Disneyland Hotel, which was uh, really nice. Right. Uh, We thought we were going to get in to the main tower that has gone through some renovations. But I guess with more and more interest to go to the parks and go to the hotels, that they actually opened one of the other wings, which we weren't expecting to do. And what made that nice is now we've been at all of their different... Uh, towers. Right. So this time we stayed at the Adventure, Adventure. Tower, mm-hmm. um, which hasn't gone through the f- refurbishments yet, but it was still pretty nice to, mm-hmm. to be there. I still had a lot of the magic. Uh, now, one thing I will say about the Disneyland Hotel is that, okay, it's a little pricey yes. okay, for what you get. Now, it's very convenient. You're right there at downtown Disney. You can walk right in there and everything else. Right. Um, but I, you know, and we love to stay in there. Some of the little perks for being there, some of the little magic, the little pixie dust for being there. But I would still, if I were you I, and you were staying at Disneyland for the first time, I would consider looking at some of those more, um, you know, good neighbor right. hotels, Disney hotels that are nearby because you can be just as close at a lot of those and you could pay like half the price, right. at least even for a really nice hotel. Yeah, that that is true. Um, you know, there are some really good, good neighbor hotels around there. Um, you know, and I, and I understand too, some people are, you know, have been so long from being able to go to Disneyland that, you know, for family events or or just, you know, recapturing the magic, decide to stay there. And, and like you said, it's wonderful. I think the other thing that um, may have influenced some of our feelings of this too is that they had also just reopened some of the restaurants at 
the Disneyland Hotel. So it was a bit busier uh, there than maybe what one would have expected. Yeah, we tried the first night to go into Trader Sam's yeah. and uh, <laughs> there was a line and a wait and uh, we decided, you know, we're going to go someplace else to right. get food because it just was, it seemed like it was going to, you know, we were really hungry at that point. So we decided it's not, we're not going to wait for it this time. We can go back and visit again uh, sometime in the future. But we had a, a nice room with a view of the pool, and the pool there is really nice, uh, you know, at the, the Disneyland Hotel. Again, you know, as far as what you decide to do, if you want to splurge and stay right there in a Disney location, and, you know, it's a classic Disney location, and maybe get a little extra magic involved with your staying there, fine, you know. So be it. The Disneyland Hotel is great. Mm -hmm. But I would, if you want to, you don't need to stay there uh, to go to visit Disneyland. There are some great hotels nearby that right. are at least as close, if not even closer than where the Disneyland Hotel is to the parks. That is so true. So, uh, but we did get there. We checked in in the morning. I uh, went down and headed beelined straight to Disney California Adventure Park, which was uh, we because we had some stuff going on that we were looking forward to getting to. Right. And, you know, one of those things that we were really excited to be able to experience a little differently than last time was going to Avengers Campus. Mm -hmm. uh, you may recall that we actually had the opportunity to go there on opening day and um They've since then really changed their process of being able to access that campus. It's not, um, you know, as it was before, you can go in and out freely. And so that was so exciting to be able to know that, hey, we're going to be able to get in there with no trouble and try some different foods and and just enjoy that area without the pressures that we had the first time. Right. It was really nice because, we, you know, after the difficulties we had on opening day, which, of course, it was opening day of that right. land. So it was really popular. And there's also some other things going on, you know, but it was a little bit tricky to get in there. But we did. And that was a lot of fun. You can go back and listen to that episode if you want to hear what we thought about it that day. But it was nice to be able to just walk in and out of there just like any other land in any other park, you know, and just and take it in as we saw fit when we were there. That was really nice. Oh, yeah. You know, and, and I think I said it before, too, but, you know, it it when they first announced Avengers Campus and we were looking at some of the um, the artwork for what it was going to look like, I thought, oh, that'll be fun. But going there, if you are familiar with Marvel characters and, and you enjoy whether it's some or all of the the Marvel universe, going there is super special. Mm -hmm. it, you do feel immersive. I didn't think we would, mm -hmm. but you really do. And there's so many fun little Easter eggs and things all around and different things to see and enjoy that it's well worth the effort to go yeah. there. Yeah, even in this pandemic era, the uh, the... the uh, character interactions are above any other land. I think we you, right. you see anywhere. I mean, such a it's such a compact space. You see so many characters in such a short amount of time. They're always around. There's always at least one or two of characters, um, either addressing the crowd at certain locations or up on the building right. or whatever. It, there, it's always going on, and it's it's really spectacular. And one of the things I love about Avengers Campus. Oh yeah, definitely. It's they have compacted a lot in a small space, and they've done it so well. Yeah, and so we. we we were, we were actually heading there, uh, going to, we had a Lamplight Lounge brunch with mm -hmm. some special friends that we were looking forward to meeting up with. But we decided to kind of make our way through Avengers Campus. But before we got to Avengers Campus, we realized that right next to it, or right down in that area, in uh, Hollywoodland area over there, was Mickey's Philhar Magic. Right. And guess what just debuted that exact weekend? Oh, exciting. Cuckoo. Yes. It was the reimagined or, you know, updated version of Mickey's Philhar Magic. So they had updated some of the scenes, including adding a brand new scene of Disney Pixar's Coco, which is a favorite of ours. We love that film right. very much. So we were really excited to see that. So we made sure it went, we got there actually just in time. They were just about to close the doors. We got <laughs> in. Right, we're, no we're, wait. <laughs> yeah. And zipped right in, got a good spot. And uh, Michelle, what did you think of, you know, the, the kind of updated version of Mickey's Philhar magic? Well, I thought it was amazing. Um, I really was just expecting maybe clips from the actual film and it wasn't it was it was its own little scene there and um and i know they had already announced that the music would be um poco loco and it was adorable 
It yeah. really was. It added. It was a great addition to to the show, and it made it very special. I already found Mickey's Philhar Magic to be highly underrated. It's a great place to go in and sit for about 15 minutes or so, get out of the heat if you're right. in Florida or even here in Southern California. But you know, sit down, watch a show. The 3D animation in it is always amazing to me it's mm-hmm. like you know it's really like they're there right in front of you a lot in, in through a lot of these scenes right. uh but then you added this brand new scene and it was glorious as soon as it started to happen i'm like oh, oh here it comes <laughs> and it was so good i it was it was gorgeous which you know coco is a gorgeous film right, right. um but adding this scene in and you know having you know Pixar characters intermingling with Disney characters and uh, the way they performed it and everything. It's I, I, I'm really excited for you if you haven't got the chance to see it yet to go out and check it out. Do it uh, because especially if you love Coco because it is spectacular. Exactly. You know, I think the other thing that uh, we could say about the Disneyland version, which is at Disney California Adventure Park, is it is a smaller um venue than the one at Walt Disney World and so you do feel a little bit more intimate and with the projections that they also include on the sides of the walls and things like that really help give that immersive fun to it yeah it's really great uh highly recommend it go check it out a lot of fun and uh that scene the new coco scene uh is is wonderful and it'll, it will just add a little more magic to some to mickey's philhar magic right. uh for those of you who have seen it over the years so uh, if you haven't seen it in a while please go check it out now we did make our way into avengers campus kind of making our way we kind of went the long way to get to <laughs> lamplight lounge but we had a little time before our brunch uh reservation and we did get to see uh one of the great things was the Dora Milaje. One of the things we didn't right. get to see last week. I mean, we saw the Dora Milaje when we were there for opening day, uh, but we didn't get to see their full show where they were kind of training people to be members of the Dora Milaje. Right. You know, unlike um, what you see with like the Jedi training where they pull a few kids into an area, this was just in front of the audience. Um, having everybody in the audience, you know, whether it was saying certain um, mantras or if it was making certain moves and things like that. They really did a great job to get the crowd to interact with that experience. Yeah, it was, it was, I, I really enjoyed that show. I love the Dora Milaje anyway. Yeah. Um, some great stuff, some great spear work, twirling and, right. you know, and, you know, fighting, I say in quotations, <laughs> uh, skills. It was really cool to watch and they, very interactive, like you said. And um, I enjoyed it. I'm glad we got to be there right at the right time to check that out. Yeah, yeah. Like I said, they made it fun and a little educational about the the concept of of culture and, you know, women power and just, you know, good positive experiences all around. Yeah, for sure. So uh, we went through there quickly and then we had to go meet um, for our Lamplight Lounge brunch, which we were really excited about because the best meal at the Lamplight Lounge has lots of great meals, Mm -hmm. lots of great food. We love the Lamplight Lounge, but their brunch is off the hook good yeah and we were lucky enough to be able to we were trying to connect with some friends of ours who have been longtime listeners and supporters of the show they've been on the show before and you know we were planning part of this trip to be able to connect with them and it happened to work out that we had booked a reservation a late reservation for lamplight lounge at i believe it was ten fifty five or something like that or ten fifty. i right. can't remember what it was and they had happened to snag one the day before at like ten forty five. Right. so we're like hey this might be perfect let's get together there and see if they'll combine our reservation so we met with them and yes um Disney was wonderful. The Lamplight Lounge staff was wonderful to work with us. And right. we combined our reservation and we could all sit together for a really nice brunch. Yeah, it was it was really great that they did that. You know, and I think one of the things that we haven't mentioned is that these are people that we've made friends with that we had never met before. Mm-hmm. And so it was in person. We've we, we've they've been on the show. So right. we've, we've done some video. Right, but stuff we've never them, met but, them yeah. in person. And it was just really 
fun to be able to have that experience um, over a meal because it's always more special when you can, you know, like break bread with people. Right, exactly. It was just nice to share that time. We had a great time talking with them. Then who we're talking about is uh, Jonathan Camille and Lorelai Cotton. Who yeah. You may remember from being on the show. They've also interacted and uh, had a lot of input on the show as well. Um, they're just really, really warm and wonderful people. Lorelai is our cutest listener yes. by far. Yes. And uh, we just had a really great brunch with them. We, we, you know, really great food. It's not funny. We ordered the exact same food. Yeah, you know, I know. Each of us, so, <laughs> uh, it, it was just a really, really good time. Oh, definitely. Um, like you said, they're, they are the best people. They are super, super warm. Uh, their love of Disney comes through in everything, whether you're talking about what they're wearing or their, their ink or just how they, you know, just enjoy life. And they are so positive and, and just so fun to be around. Yeah. Um, you, by the way, uh, go check them out. You can find them on, on Facebook, but also uh, best place to find them is on Instagram. Uh, uh, Jonathan is at, at Vinyl and Disney and Camille is at Castle Bound and Down where she makes some incredible outfits right. uh, for little ones out there that uh, you definitely need to check out because uh, she does some some amazing work. Very impressive. High quality. Just amazing. She's got talent. Yeah, for sure. So uh, we enjoyed a great brunch with them. The food we had was a couple of our favorite dishes, Lamplight Lounge, brunch. I mean, the, their flavor profile, what they do, it's some of the most flavorful food I have I think I've found at any Disney parks mm-hmm. restaurant, possibly even any Disney resort restaurant there. We got the uh, chilaquiles mm-hmm. and we also got the potato flautas and both spectacular along with mimosa flight which yes. uh, of course you know was wonderful and uh, we just had a, a, a like you said uh, a wonderful time breaking bread with the cotton family most definitely and you know just to for people you know if you do get an opportunity to go there uh, the mimosa flight there's enough to share with two people mm-hmm. you don't have you may want to get your own flight but you don't need to and like you said the, the food is great the brunch is only uh, I believe on week Weekends. I think it's yeah Friday, Friday Saturday, Saturday, Saturday Sunday, Sunday yeah. right um, so it's not it's not every day but if you're going to be in the parks around those days take the opportunity if you can to try to get a reservation there and like you mentioned sometimes that reservation can be made um, that just the day before just keep checking you know sometimes the day of sometimes they'll be able to accommodate uh, same day walk-ins but you know um, and don't be disappointed if you can't uh, you know, because they, they do have other food that's great, too. That's not just brunch, but uh, that is certainly a special meal they have there. If you have time to plan it out in advance and can make that reservation, highly suggest making right. brunch if you're going to be there on, during those days. And yes, even if you can't get the reservation, um, you know, check for the walk up because a lot of times they do have availability and you might find a spot. So give it a shot. It can't hurt to try. can't hurt to ask and see if there's something that might be available for you. Correct. So, uh, so a great time with them. Took some pictures afterwards. Yeah. Just a wonderful time. And uh, just so happy that we finally got to meet them in person. And it will not be the last right. time we're meeting with them in person. For oh, sure. yeah. We look forward to getting together again. Just had amazing times mm-hmm. with them. So um, we had to split off from them because, well, we did. We were successful once again at getting Web Slingers, yeah. a boarding group. So uh, we our number was called up. So we headed back over to Avengers Campus, went on Web Slingers. And what do you know? Who won? Michelle beat me <laughs> at Web Slingers. Uh, congratulations to you. Great job. She's obviously a better spider woman than I am a spider man for sure. It was exciting to finally beat you at a, at one of the games, the video games. And it was, it's, it's one of my favorite attractions. It's, but it is like, um, definitely stimulating. Yeah. <laughs> And a, and a bit of a workout and an upper body workout for sure and but uh that was great although we were concerned that we weren't going to get on it at one point because it broke down we were really close to getting <sighs> in there and it broke down we had to sit for about a half an hour right. uh waiting for it to boot back up and get going and we were already a bit tired and stressed and hot and everything else but uh 
uh, we were able to make it through and get in there. And right. yeah, so glad we did because uh, Michelle did whoop my butt. You know, so. <laughs> Just a little. Um, and then on the way out, we were able to get a little bit more Spider-Man fun because it was another thing that we didn't get to see the first time we visited Adventures Campus. And that was the actual Spider-Man little show right. that they have with that special animatron- audio animatronic. Right. And uh, uh, that was really cool as well. Right, Michelle? Oh, my gosh. Yeah. It. It looks more real in person than what I've seen on film. So that was blew my mind. It's great. Yeah, they play it out really well, um, selling it all. And then uh, seeing this thing launch through the air is pretty spectacular yeah. in person. And they finish it out really well. And then Spider-Man comes down and uh, meets for photos afterwards. It's really, really well done. Oh, yeah. It's great. It's um you know, and, and like, like I said, it, or I should say, like you said, you know, it has a, an opportunity there for interaction with the characters, including Spider-Man, especially for the kids, you know, and, and even though you can't go right up and, you know, touch, hug or get autographs, you know, you get pretty close and you can get some great photos. For sure. So, so um, we decided after that, it, we were kind of hot, tired, um, and we needed to actually go back and do some planning for some things that we had coming up. So we went back to the hotel. Our hotel room was ready. Uh, went went there, got into our hotel room, and kind of cooled down, rested up for a little bit, got some work done. Mm-hmm. Uh, but a little bit later, we got hungry, and we're like, okay, what are we going to do? Where are we going to go eat? We tried Trader Sam's and Tangaroa yeah. Terrace to begin with. That looked a little too full. Why not go back to Avengers Campus, <laughs> you know, as you would, uh, and pick up a little shawarma, right. which uh, we had not, uh, you know, we enjoyed the first time. And it was simple enough, so we went back and got some shawarma, and again, the shawarma was very good. Yeah, very tasty. I, you know, um, I don't know if it's just because when we went the first day, the food was going so quickly that it was super fresh. Um, this one, it, it had a great taste. Um I just felt like it had set a little bit longer because some of the bread was falling apart as you're as we we're trying That's to eat true. it. Um, but it's still great. Um, I think we each tried, you know, I had the plant based one and you and had, I had the, the chicken, chicken. Yeah. Um, both very, very good and uh, glad to have had that experience again. Right. Uh, yeah. Again, it, I, I agree with you. I think this one, it, you could tell that they had just put out the first time because at one point last if you remember from that episode we didn't even think we we're going to get to try this right because it was selling out and they just at the last moment when we were on our way actually headed out of the park they were actually putting out some new batches of the shawarma so we right. were able to try it uh this time uh wasn't quite as busy as that <laughs> uh so yeah some of these may have sat around for a little while but still tasty still delicious yeah. um we'll still go back and get it again and then we, we were sitting there and we also had our our favorite marshmallow milk stout right, beer, which yeah. we had to have along with that because that's really good too. Um, and then we're sitting there and realized, oh, there's this dessert over at uh, <laughs> Pim's uh, Test Kitchen that we wanted to uh, check out. And we're like, oh, yeah, I saw some pictures of this and saw some people really love it. And it's kind of a, a candy bar, uh, but with a brownie in the middle of right. it. You know, it's kind of, and it's very similar to a kind of a Snickers bar and flavor. I'm like, oh, yeah, let's get one. Do you want one too, honey? And she's like, yeah, I'll get one too. Uh, so we ended up getting two of these things <laughs> to yet to find out when we actually picked the thing up, it was like enormous, yes. uh, you know, because it's funny if you look at, at somewhere around here, we have the wrapper, it says right. bite size on it, yeah. but it's this giant candy bar thing. Right. I loved how they did it. So like you're saying, they put it in a wrapper that looked like a, you know, a candy bar wrapper. Um, but the actual dessert extended on both sides of the edge edges of it so that it was much larger um, comical that they put bite size. And yeah, it's so funny because, you know, as we've seen with Pim's kitchen, things that you expect to be large are, may come out as miniatures and things that you expect to be small come out enormous, you know, and, and just those Pim particles can really have a good impact on food. And it was hilarious to see the size, but that gave us an opportunity to have, the dessert over two nights yeah, because we could over, share. I was like, it was almost three nights, but yeah. Um, and we finally got to get into uh, the taste uh, kitchen, right? Um, the test kitchen, uh, because we didn't get the chance to go there for opening day. So it was good to get in there and see some of the things they had inside, you know, and uh, you know, like the giant soda cans right. that are feeding the soda machine and uh, the condiments, you know, right. the giant mustard and ketchup, uh, ketchup bottles right. and stuff. And that was pretty cool too. But uh, yeah, highly recommend you. Uh, but you only need one for a couple people. Right. 
Um, <laughs> pick up the Choco Smash thing, uh, the, the candy bar, because it's really good. It, uh, if you like a Snickers bar, you're going to like this. It's it's tasty. Oh, yeah, it's... Um, a little, like I said, brownie in right. it. But it's it's really good. Good chocolate taste mm-hmm. to it. Yeah. So, so we ended up taking that back, enjoyed that in our hotel room where we were worn out and just, uh, you know, with a little wine and then and, and called in a night mm-hmm. and uh, woke up the next morning and decided with all the things that were going on that, uh, you know, we had a park reservation for Disneyland for that day. We were planning on checking out the brand new reimagined Jungle mm-hmm. Cruise and hopefully getting that. Uh, that uh, Dole Whip split Split. and Mm -hmm. the the Jungle Cruise boat thing and uh, going to see Mickey's Mix Magic, which we hadn't seen, you know, since obviously before the pandemic. Um, But as it turned out, it was time that we needed to head back and make some planning arrangements and everything because we were going to be heading to Florida much earlier than we expected. So we actually ended up uh, leaving a a Disneyland. We had another night reserve on our Disneyland hotel reservation, but we we just needed to get back to San Diego. So we cut out at that moment. Yeah. Yeah. Um, You know, obviously it was a disappointment to have to do that, but you know, family comes first and Mm -hmm. we realized that uh, with what happened with my mom and her accident that we needed to uh, start securing some reservations to get to Florida. Like you said earlier, we had expected to leave the following week. Um, And so we ended up uh, doing that and I had to tidy up some things with work as well so that I could end up leaving earlier. Oh, and we needed to pack and right. you know, some other <laughs> things, but yeah. Uh, so we decided it's best to just go ahead and cut out. And that's what we did. And we, canceled the reservation moved it to another date and uh, which we will the park uh, reservation yeah yes. the park reservation um and we will do that uh, at another date anyway so uh so anything anyway as you know um unfortunate things happened when we were out in florida but we decided because we had made these reservations long long ago park reservations mm-hmm. for walt disney world and some hotel reservations as a matter of fact which we canceled because we just didn't know what was going to happen on, while we were there so right. we ended up you know weighing our options as things went on and deciding that maybe going to Walt Disney World would be a good distraction for us and especially for Michelle. So we did end up doing that on uh, Sunday, July 25th and 26th. Right. Yeah. So, um, you know, the day after my mom had passed away and, you know, like you had said, we had had those park reservations and, you know, we just, it was, it was either sit around and, and just, feel sad and moping um we were waiting for other families to members to get in town as well so we just decided let's let's try to have some diversion and head over to walt disney world yeah so that's what we did we headed to epcot because we really wanted to see the food and wine Mm -hmm. festival the epcot international food and wine festival and uh you know check out some of the food that was there and see what it was all about. So we went there um, and we we ended up going into the Disney Vacation Club Lounge and mm-hmm. sitting down, which is the Disney Vacation Club Lounge at Epcot. If, you, if you've ever been there, it's a really nice place to stop, get out of the heat for right. a little while. Um, it's, it's handled a little differently now than it used to be. It used to be... I mean, they would check you in, but most often you could get up there and and it was rarely completely full. Sometimes it was, but it was rare that you, you, you just need to find the right spot while you're up there. Now they're like holding off until they're seating it almost like a restaurant. Like they're waiting till they have seats open so you can go in there. And it's different now that they have um, it, 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 they have those great soda machines up there that you can try to sample all sorts of different Coca-Cola products. Um, now you actually, they have somebody uh, getting that for you. So you're not just going up there and selecting the things for yourself, but it still gets to sample a lot of those great uh, products. Right, exactly. So like you said, when you first get to the lounge uh, downstairs to check in, they actually take your phone number and tell you that they'll text you when there's a spot ready. And we were surprised that we walked just a matter of a few yards before we got the the text saying something was ready, which surprised us because there were some people in line ahead of us. Um, But I think people were moving through quicker. And like you said, they actually bring you to where you're going to sit. So you don't have that option of, well, let's see, where are we going to go? But but the nice thing about it is you knew where to sit. You know, I mean, you didn't have to try to find something. Um, and they were very friendly with the issue of the, of the drinks and mixing whatever you want, try whatever you want and still 
give you snacks and stuff. Yeah. So it, it was pretty much the same experience, just a little bit more coordinated. And I actually think I liked it. I kind of liked it. I, I like mm-hmm. not having to fight to, to figure out where to sit. And everything. Right, it was, right. It made it much easier. In, exactly. In so, yeah, I mean, I would like to, I like the going to the soda machines and trying different things right. out for yourself. But you know, despite that, it was still great. And it was a good chance for us to sit down there, get the, the food guide out and kind of select what we wanted to try and sample as we went through World Showcase and a lot of these, these kitchens that they have out for the Food and Wine Festival. Right, because uh, a few episodes ago, we had made a list and we had talked about some of the foods we were looking forward to. to. Uh, with what happened, I totally forgot to bring that list <laughs> so we kind of had to start from scratch of looking at the at the actual guidebook which was fun though too and and take a look at i like how the guidebook was laid out this time too um considering some of the kiosks won't open until october 1st um I, you got a clearer picture i know the last festival where they had some of the the uh food was on a rotational basis it wasn't sure uh, you know, is today the day they have this, uh, d- you know, dish or is that not available to us? So I like the layout of it. It really was clear which things are available now, which things are going to be October 1st. And so it was, like you said, in the lounge, it gave us that opportunity to, you know, kind of go back through and say, oh yeah, that's right. We wanted this one and all oh, this thing. So mainly new dishes, I think right. is what we were focusing on. Right. So we headed out of the lounge and beelined to uh, many of these kitchens that we were mm-hmm. looking forward to. Um, and we hit up a few of them. Now we could, there's a lot of different kitchens, a lot of different food out there. We didn't try nearly everything. Normally we would do this over a couple of days and try a lot of different right. dishes. So, you know, bear with us, but we are going to go through some of the things that we, we d- sampled so you can have an idea at least of these things if you're planning a trip Mm -hmm. coming up in the future so you can kind of know what we thought about them and you know no matter what we thought about them um if you really want to try it try it because sometimes you know with these festival foods and depending on who's working them at one day or another uh it might be better it might be worse it can go either way you know you'd like it to be you know as consistent as possible but it's not always the case with this especially with the staffing that disney is going through right now there's a little bit of inconsistency from time to time there but right right yeah uh, here's the things that we tried so first place we hit up was australia the mm-hmm. australian booth and uh what we got there were the grilled sweet and spicy uh bush berry shrimp with pineapple pepper onion and snap peas that was six dollars mm-hmm. we got the roasted lamb chop with sweet potato puree bush berry pea salad and pistachio pomegranate uh, gremolata that was 825 and the chateau tamunda grand barossa cabernet savignon because it's the food and wine festival <laughs> so we had to have some wine as well that was six dollars and um i i really liked actually i liked both these mm-hmm. dishes i i don't think they were spectacular but they were both tasty definitely i mean i think uh the shrimp one it was really delicious um i remember commenting to you that as much as i really liked it it was more i saw something that if i were to have it in a restaurant want it as an appetizer and not be the entire meal i I think it was just it was a great you know taster kind of menu Mm -hmm. item yeah, not bad for $6. I mean, it was only like three shrimp and right. a lot of peppers, but it was a nice, sweet, sort mm-hmm. of sp- somewhat spicy balance within it. I thought it was good. Uh, the roasted lamb chop, a uh, little overcooked, but I mean, you, you don't really expect it to be as this medium rare lamb chop at one of these kitchens, right. you know, but it was still very tender, very tasty. Mm-hmm. Really loved the pistachio pomegranate gremolata that was with it. Yeah. Uh, that was really good and a good balance. It was, a, I think we me- you mentioned it was a little gamier right. than a lot of lamb you got, but I thought it worked for this dish. Right. I mean, and I'm okay with gamey. I know that some people aren't as much, Mm -hmm. especially when, you know, you're trying a product, something like lamb chop. But um, I thought that it, like you said, with the pomegranate to accent that it really, really went very nicely. Mm -hmm. Um, And you're right. It was tender. It was, you know, um, I remember even, you know, kind of holding it like the lollipop kind of of lamb chop and, and some of the coating on the crust was just so delicious it was kind of like mm, gotta have more of this right, <laughs> right so um we enjoyed those dishes like i said um they weren't spectacular they were good not mm-hmm. great um you know you're uh, again your uh opportunity may vary what your situation is it may be better it may be worse it can't promise you that but this is kind of what we experienced while we right. were there uh we tried to go to france to try and get food and we saw this really long line oh my at gosh, france yeah, france it seems to always have a really long line so right 
We skimmed over that and I moved know. along. Unfortunately, we were hoping to kind of get back to it, but we just never did. But. Yeah, yeah. And you know, once you get so far away, you're like, oh, is it? If we get back there and the line's long again, what do we? You know. Right. So yeah, we didn't get to try some of that great food. So and it was hot, so we decided, hey, you know, why we heard that there's some of these dishes that we like that are in the rotunda of the American adventure, right. you know, some air conditioning, yes. you know, out of the sunshine. So we're like, let's go there's some dishes there that we wanted to check out. So we went to the Rotunda Bistro Bistro and tried the wild mushroom and truffle tart with Gruyere and creme fraiche, which is five dollars, and the chilled crab avocado and avocado par- uh, parfait with caviar, which was six fifty, along with a little glass because again, food and wine. <laughs> uh, the Domaine Carneros Cuvée Brut uh, Rosé, um, which was eight fifty, and. Um, one of these was our first real failure of the day. Yeah, I would say. yeah. And it wasn't the br- it wasn't the brute rosé. I'll tell you that that <laughs> no, was just fine. That was awesome. Unfortunately, as much as we were looking forward to it, and it was a beautiful plate of food. The chilled crab and avocado parfait. The crab was just really like like they put in a cup of seawater in with the crab. It was really <laughs> really salty. Yeah, it it just tasted like maybe somebody salted and somebody afterwards salted the crab meat again and didn't taste it because it was just it was really like you took a bite of it and like oh I this is like just too much like almost burn your tongue salty yeah um the the, it's too bad because the mousse was really good and if you could mix it up enough and just get the right balance of even with the saltiness of the crab with the mousse it was kind of okay um and this is something that really i mean i i can't say that i would recommend you trying it you know but if you're interested in it, it might be different next time because it may have just been this one time that they oversalted this crab. But uh, I, this is actually maybe a dish I'm going to make for Disney Dishes blog and do it better than yeah. what we had. <laughs> um, but because it could be a really lovely dish, it just unfortunately the the one we got was a fail. Right? Yeah. I mean the flavor profile of the crab meat and the mousse, even tasting it kind of salty, you could tell it, it is a great combo. Um, yeah, you're right. I think this was just a mistake. It's unfortunate. I just, I don't think that's what they were going for. And it just seemed like, like I said, that somebody may have, um, there, two people might have salted the dish right. before they served it up and just never tasted yeah, it. Yeah, that's what it kind of seemed like to me. But However, the wild mushroom and truffle tart with Gruyere and creme fraiche was oh, good. It was awesome. Yeah, yep. that was a good dish. I uh, totally recommend you picking that up if you like that kind of thing, if you like mm-hmm. mushrooms, um, I, I, you know, with a little puff pastry and everything. Um, I thought that was really good. We thought about getting it a second time because we enjoyed it. Right. Yeah, yeah, it was really great. So another thing that happened while we were in the uh, Rotunda Bistro (laughs) is that we were sitting there and we had gotten the table and everything and we were just getting done with our dish and we thought we were, you know, we were just getting ready to pack up and head to the next location. And then some people came up to us. We thought, okay, this are going to be people that are going to want, want our table, table. Yeah. Yeah, which is totally understandable. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's what you do when yeah. you're, you know, during one of these festivals or whatever. But they actually recognized us uh, or actually, uh, you know, recognized that I think I was podcast name, right. Mm -hmm. I was wearing the podcast shirt, the Hyperion Adventures podcast, and they came up and they were the sweetest people. Unfortunately, as you know, we were not exactly, you know, in our minds, the way we normally would be, we didn't have some stuff with us that we would normally give away to people that recognize us. So I apologize that I forgot your names. I'm so sorry. I know. And we wish we had like taken a selfie with you. I mean, like you said, honey, we were just so, um, you know, with the grief of what we were dealing with, you know, uh, we were just not thinking. We weren't on our games. No, we weren't on our games. And we really regret that because um, this family was so warm to us and so sweet. Um, And it was really cool to hear that their daughters are interested in doing their own podcast. So um, as if you're listening, and as we mentioned to you that day, please reach out to us anything that we can do to help or, or advice or whatever, we'd be happy to share with you. Right? Please hit us up at our Gmail account, Hyperion Adventures Podcast at gmail.com. And let us know that you were the family that was there. Yeah, a wonderful couple, their two daughters, they were just really, really nice and sweet to us. And uh, I want to get you a little something that we normally would have given away. Right. found us within the parks um, because we didn't have it with us this time. And, and, you know, I also want to give you some billing on the show. So um, please, 
please uh, let us know. Remind us of your names. I'm so sorry. Yes. Um, but you you really did leave a mark with us, and we appreciate you coming up to us and saying hello. Yeah, we really do. That was, that was really, you know, a high point of the day for us, um, you know, getting an opportunity to meet you. And we just can't apologize enough for how lame and... How lame we were. We were. <laughs> Yeah, just understand we're not usually that lame. We're was, only somewhat lame, right? Not, not so quite lame. that bad, but oh, I'm so so sorry. <laughs> yeah, um, not that we weren't nice to them. We, you right, know, we, you right. Know, but, but we just didn't we, have much. We weren't. We weren't in a very conversational mode right. that day. We our, were just trying to be distracted and elsewhere, just yeah. keep moving on and try not to dwell on things but you all were really nice and we yes really appreciate it was sweet you, so thank you so so we after that we did uh, exit there and uh, we moved on to our next location which was italy where we wanted to try a few dishes we had some good success with some dishes at festivals before mm-hmm. at italy and, uh, and this pasta yeah which is you know we love pasta yeah so, and this was uh, also another great location this may be in my favorite location of mm-hmm. where we stopped you know we didn't stop at a lot of places didn't get a, as much food as we probably would have in normal circumstances right. um but i really enjoy what we got from italy we got the uh, mezzalune co- uh, cro- <laughs> wow uh <laughs> crocante uh which was a crispy half moon breaded mozzarella filled ravioli with uh pomodoro sauce uh that was for twelve dollars and the ravioli, which was a grilled chicken ravioli with Alfredo sauce, Romano cheese, and Prismolo. Uh, that was for $13. And the Italian white sangria with Prosecco, which was mm-hmm. really, really yummy. We've had something similar from Italy before, and we right. always enjoy that. That's $11. Um, I love both these dishes. I really love the 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 breaded and fried mm-hmm. mozzarella one. I like the, the, the fact that it, it, it was kind of that crunchy, crispy, Texture change along with the tomato sauce right. and the mozzarella and everything. I thought it was really, really delicious. Oh, I, I agree. Well, I love both of them. Mm-hmm. Oh, um, we love both of them. We, yeah, I, I, I would put them uh, at par with, together that I like both of them equally, but for different reasons. Um, but you're right. The breaded fried one, you know, had that nice crunch and fried food. Yeah. Fried pasta. I mean, you love pasta we love fried foods so, um <laughs> not a health food dish no no, no. uh and and i know these were a little bit pricier you did get somewhat of a slightly larger portion i i felt like um for both of those dishes and so it, you know I, they were very very enjoyable for yeah. sure uh we both enjoyed those a bunch i think those were our favorite dishes mm-hmm. of the day Outside of one more thing, I think Michelle really liked that I'm going to get to here in just a second. But uh, of the main dishes, I think those were our favorites. And we would have gone back for more of those if we had a chance to revisit right. during Food and Wine. Maybe we will when we get back out mm-hmm. there in September slash October. We'll see about that. So uh, the one final dish that we got a chance to try, we, we you know, we that was about our fill of food. It was hot. Oh, really we're like, hot. you know, we were worn out. It's been a crazy few days. So we kind of called it after that, but we did want to pick up one more thing that Michelle had circled, starred, highlighted (laughs) on a dish. And that was the s'mores whoopie pie lawn uh, from Flavors from Fire, uh, which was the smoked chocolate cake, graham cracker, marshmallow, chocolate ganache, and candied bacon for $4. Uh, I had a little piece of this. Michelle ate most of it. Michelle, (laughs) what did you think of this dish? I actually loved it. You know, I thought it was going to be fun to eat and everything, but it really did have a lot of flavor for what you paid you got a fairly large size um the other interesting thing is we didn't eat it that day so it was a day old by the time we did eat it um and it was still really great quality great taste oh, i loved it what about you i thought this is i only had a small bit of it you know i asked her to cut me off a little a little like eighth of the thing and, and i was, offered more yeah, i just want people no, no, know no, no. that <laughs> No, no, no. I had something else that I was eating for dessert. Um, so, you know, and so I tried it, you know, and I thought it was really, really good. I, I it really, the smokiness, because there's all these in this mm-hmm. one uh, place, a lot of it is uh, smoky dishes. Right. And the smokiness of it came through and made it really unique from your typical s'more. Not that, you know, marshmallow cooked over a fire can't be a little smoky to begin with, but right. the, the smokiness really came through with this dish and it balanced with the chocolate and everything else. I thought it was really good. Right. I mean, first of all, whoopie pies. Those are great. <laughs> Um, you know, so it, it had that, that same kind of a texture to it in terms of the cake, but you did have the graham cracker mm-hmm. taste with it as well. Like you said, some of the smokiness and, you know, it wasn't messy marshmallowy thing. It, it, 
I thought it was a great, great dessert. It was really good. Good, good. They really did a good job on that one. Yeah, I'm glad we got to pick that up. So yeah. So uh, we decided at that point, uh, good enough. We know, let's rest up. We have some more things to do that evening. Uh, so we actually did book a different hotel. It wasn't a Disney hotel because we had canceled. I told you before our Disney reservations that mm-hmm. we had to begin with because we just weren't sure. So we booked an offsite hotel at a Hilton Home Two Suites. Um, just like a couple miles, just actually right outside of the gates of right. Disney World itself, just a couple miles out. And um, it was not a bad hotel. It was right. a newer place in Flamingo Crossings um, where they're building a brand new mall and some things. And mm-hmm. um, the hotel, the room we got was actually very spacious. Um, mm-hmm. And we, for the most part, outside of some parking issues late at night, so there's yeah. a lot of hotels sharing a parking lot there. Right. It was a little tough to find a parking spot. But outside of that, I thought it was a pretty good stay. Oh, yeah. It was, It was. you know, you could tell it was a newer building and everything like that. Um, I thought, like you said, it was really comfortable and spacious. You know, I, I could see for a business traveler or somebody who's with family and trying to do some business on the side, you get a little bit of extra space there. Um, you know, so it, it was convenient in that regard. Right. Mm-hmm. So that it worked out well for us. Um, we had a rental car, so it made it easy you know, anyway. Right. Um, and so we just, we went there, got arrested for about an hour, Check, got into our hotel room. Really easy, you know, if you have the Hilton app, you can mm-hmm. just... And we didn't even stop at the front desk. We had to, you know, open it up right, right. with our phones. And it was really simple and uh, very convenient. So then we headed back and we decided it was the one other thing that we really, not really, really, really wanted to do. And that was to go see Happily Ever After mm-hmm. before it possibly goes away for good. Um, and so that's what we did. We went back to Magic Kingdom. We also wanted to get some ice cream because apparently we haven't eaten enough at that point. <laughs> uh, now the Plaza, you know, ice cream shop is back right. open, which we missed so dearly. And the first thing we did is head to state there yeah. <laughs> and got some ice cream, got a brownie sundae from the Plaza shop. And the ice cream is always great. There. Yeah, it was delicious. It was great to share that and, you know, just start our evening there. Yeah. And we wanted to do the people mover, the TTA <laughs> people mover. So we headed over, did that, um, got in the people mover again for the first time in oh, so long, uh, which was really nice. Then we found a great spot because we needed to be sure and find a spot you know michelle is a little vertically challenged <laughs> and we didn't want after all this effort to try and be there and where everything that's gone on i wanted to be sure that she had the best spot possible so we got there a bit early to make sure at the at the hub uh to make sure we had a great spot for her and we did have a great spot for happily mm-hmm. ever after yeah yeah i mean we didn't get considering we really didn't get there tremendously earlier, you know, and then um, we also had an opportunity again, I <laughs> guess we didn't need enough, um, <laughs> but we knew we weren't going to have dinner at that point. Right. So we did, decide to share some of the mini corn dogs from Casey's. The corn dog nuggets. Yes. Yeah. Um, they were really good. They're tasty. They yeah. are very tasty. More fried food. <laughs> so, so it was fun, you know, doing that and uh, then watching the fireworks. And happily ever after is so great. I just love it so much. And it was glorious again. I mm-hmm. was weeping all the way through it. And uh, when Tinkerbell came out, I was a puddle and it was people cheering and yep. uh it was spectacular to see happily ever after again yeah i love that you know we've talked about that before we love that one and yeah i know that was one of the times though i did tell you i said i fought from crying because i knew once i started i wouldn't be able to sure. stop um so yeah. i just just tried to be in the moment enjoy the show uh the music the displays we had a like you said a a great spot that we could really see the projections on the castle really well. And so very, very much enjoyed it. One thing I will say about it is that while the show is spectacular and everything, if uh, you're concerned about what's going on in the world right now with the pandemic or whatever, it's a little crazy in the hub right now, as far as people Mm -hmm. not wearing their masks. And this was Mm -hmm. before the mask mandate came back into Disney world, you know, this week. Um, and it being very tight quarters. So if you're concerned about that at all, you may want to show up a little bit later, not wait around for the show or, you know, maybe find a different location because it was tight and, uh, it was not, everybody was, most people weren't masked up. Right. Right. You know, and I, and I know there's the thought of if you're outdoors, you know, it's safer, which it is. Um, but still, if you are outdoors and you're 
you know, as close as, because cast members would keep having the crowd move closer and closer. Um, I double masked. Mm-hmm. I was, you know. And we're totally, and we're, we're fully vaccinated. Vaccinated, but yeah. we know there's breakthrough and with the Delta variant, you know, um, because it, you know, if you're there for a long time, it's like as if you're in a concert, you know, right. going to a concert. So, you know, just something, you know, for you all to make your choices about it. Right. So um, that was, you know, we did Happily Ever After. We went on the People Mover again because mm-hmm. there, there, it was really busy. And there were, you know, we we're like, what are we going to do? Where do we want to go? And we're like, yeah, let's do the People Mover again. You know, it's dark now. It wasn't dark the first time we went through. It was dark. Did the People Mover again. And we've when we did the People Mover, we forgot that the park closed at 10 o'clock. Right. So we got off the People Mover and we realized all the other attractions were already closed. closed yeah. But the people mover was still letting people on. So we went on the people mover again. Yeah. Apparently we needed to be sure and to make up all the pe- times we weren't able to do the people mover all in one night. Yeah. Uh, but- and we were the last batch though. There right. was, you know, there was one person behind us that they actually tried to tell her no. Um, we just hurried on quick enough that they they didn't turn us away, but I think, you know, and she was alone and everything. They finally just said yes and let her go on. So we were in the last batch. Yeah. Of the um, night. Which was fun. And, um, you know, that would, the people mover is always great. I, it's just relaxing and it's such great views of right. Tomorrowland and a lot of the rest of the park and that I uh, just totally enjoy it. So I was happy to do that again. Um, and then there was time. Okay. We're, we're done for the evening. Right. It was time to, it had been a long day. Let's, let's get out of here. And, and the unfortunate thing is because the, the happily ever after and the close of the park are so close together. It's also when everybody else right. is heading out of there. <laughs> so we looked at the, the monorail, there was a, a super long right. queue for that. We looked over at the ferry boat. There was a super long queue for that. We thought about taking the boat over to the Polynesian and then walking over from there right. to the uh, ticket and transportation area. But there was a fairly long queue for that. And then we saw the little path that led from the Magic Kingdom to the Grand Floridian, which we had not done that right. walking path before. We're like, hey, we can walk some more. What do we got? Why not? And we, plus it gives us a chance to try it. So that's what we did. Yeah, it was it was funny. I mean, boy, did we get our steps in that day yeah. like between, you know, going around World Showcase and, you know, going back to the park for Magic Kingdom fireworks. And now we're going around <laughs> in the, the monorail resort area. It was hilarious. Yeah, it's not a short walk, um, you know, too. No. I, I, I didn't try. And I, I probably should have if I had thought about it tried to find out exactly how long that walk is Mm -hmm. but uh, it wasn't a short walk but one of the benefits we got out of that is like right when we got on that trail right in front of us it looked like they were performing it just for us on the trail was the uh, electrical water pageant started up right there for us so we were able to enjoy that as we were walking along right that was a neat surprise that we were able to experience as we were walking along that uh, pathway yeah so that was a good time now it gets a little trick it's easy to get from Magic Kingdom to the Grand Floridian right. itself. Once you get there, it gets a little tricky. You need to start looking at, ma- unless you know the path really well, especially at, at night. night. Yeah, <laughs> um, It gets a little tricky. I, I would suggest it took us too long to figure this out. <laughs> Um, or me figure this out. Michelle was on top of it as she always is. Um, get out the app and kind of start looking at some of the trails that go there because it can get a little tricky getting from the Grand Floridian to the Polynesian. And once we got to the Polynesian, we knew since we'd stayed there right. of how to get exactly to the ticket and transportation. But it got a little tricky in between there. But it still is. It's not that tough to figure out once right. you go there. And it, it is an interesting walk and uh, through some interesting. Uh, spaces around Disney and the, some cool resorts as right. well. Right. I mean, when you're first getting on that trail, first of all, that there's a lot of people with you. So it's not usually just, you know, one or two people. There were a fair amount of people that took advantage of that. You just can't continue to follow them all the time right. because they're going to different buildings. And some stuff. are going to the resort. <laughs> some <laughs> right. are going, who knows the where parking they're going. Lot yeah. Or, yeah, yeah. I mean, to the hotel parking lot or whatever. Yeah. So um, like you said, we had to get the app out. And I think we concluded we really didn't save any time whatsoever, but it was <laughs> a fun experience to to do right now yeah i think if we had waited in the queues or for for Mm -hmm. either form of transportation it probably would have been about the same but it was interesting since we never tried it before yeah it was good we walked off that whoopie pie and some other things definitely 
in the ice cream sundae <laughs> and all the food we ate. So that was good. So, so we went back to our hotel, crashed for the night, got up the next day, and we decided let's go do Magic Kingdom. We had our park reservation for Magic Kingdom, which may have not been the best choice right. because Magic Kingdom was crazy busy yeah. and it was hot. And uh, we got there and... There was very little, I mean, most, most attractions had a pretty long wait time. Yeah, so we didn't yeah. really, and we were just weren't feeling wait at times for a lot of these. Um, we kind of walked around a little bit, checked a couple of things out. Country Bears opened up at 11, so we did that. And then we had a reservation at one of our favorite restaurants, our favorite restaurant, mm-hmm. Magic Kingdom, which is the Jungle Navigation Company Limited Skipper Canteen. And... That was good because um, the great thing about that restaurant is, well, the food is always good there. Right. Um, but we also, we were there early enough close to its opening that we were able to request a very special table there that we had never sat in before. Yeah, it was something that we've seen and we wanted to do, but we had never really um, asked specifically for that that booth. And this time we did. And right. The magic happened yes so we normally ask for because we prefer the either the jungle or the sea room mm-hmm. there because those are kind of their side rooms that are a little bit quieter than the main hall uh within it nothing wrong with the main hall right. but we like those rooms they're just a little bit quieter a little more quaint um and just a little more interesting to us um but we also play, put in a request for this one specific booth and apparently mm-hmm. we were the first people to request that booth because we got Another it day. it's yeah it's the butterfly uh, booth right uh, within one of those rooms and it, it's, it's just this, this great little booth uh, with all these mounted butterflies beautiful beautiful mm-hmm. butterflies all around it and it really is really a neat spot yeah I mean and just being in this little booth it's like little curved booth it's just you just felt like special and yeah. you know in the area yeah and then we got a couple nice glasses of wine and we got our food you had the uh the curry crew stew Mm, it's delicious yeah and i got the uh the noodles Uh, i forget the name of the noodles but it's kind of a thai noodle dish um that uh i highly suggest unless you like really spicy food you ask for the sauce on the side because then you can add as much spice as you want they gave me this big old bowl of sauce that was really (laughs) spicy to me uh so i'm like a little bit little bit little bit and it was tasty but uh you know just so you know you know be prepared for that if if you like spicy food go ahead and have the sauce already in it if you're not so much into the spicy or you like a little spice best to ask for it on the side then you can kind of add as much as you want but it's it was tasty as well right and actually our skipper is the one that made the suggestion that you Mm -hmm. can have those options so that was nice that 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 was uh offered to us as we were trying to decide our menu selections. Yeah, our great server skipper. Um, oh, he, God, was, he was amazing. He was fantastic. Uh, we also got the uh, the, the cheese um, the cheese bread puffs, whatever right. they were. Appetizer. Yeah, with uh, it was a chimichurri and a cream cheese sauce that came with them. To, and they, those were yummy oh, as well. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think that was something that was on the menu mm-hmm. that was, you know, that they offered as, you know, some of the dishes of the day. So that was really great. Yeah. That was so a really nice meal, and that was where we we decided that was going to cap off our our time at Disney. We needed to get back, make some other arrangements, and just you know work through some other things. So that was it. That pretty much was our Disney experience for the entire trip. Uh, But you know, again, um, it was a different kind of visit for us for both parks because of things that we had going on. But. They were great distractions. Disney is still full of magic and um, it was magic that we needed at the right time. Yeah, definitely. Um, And I think Monday, part of the issue is it it was, you know, how emotions when you're dealing with families and death that you never know what's going to hit you in a particular way. And that was actually a harder day for me. So I think that it was, you know, finding it harder to really see the distraction in that. So I appreciate that you were willing to, you know, cut it a little short and, and, and head back. Yeah. It was perfect for what we needed to get done, but, uh, and we did try several new things. We did try several new things and we're looking forward to getting back and trying other new things and some old things that we didn't get a chance to experience this time that we had maybe uh, would have done had our trip been a more normal trip. Exactly. uh, So, so that's what we went through. That's what those were our visits to the park. Hope you enjoyed that. Uh, if you have any questions about uh, the Epcot International Food and Wine Festival, what's going on with Disneyland right now, please send them to us and we'd be happy to answer them in an upcoming show.
So we've talked a lot about the recap. Actually, this has gone longer than I expected it to go, yeah. talking about this mm-hmm. recap. But I do want to get to Jungle Cruise, which we watched mm-hmm. last night. Um, we decided not to go to the theater. We did the uh, Disney Plus Premier Access version of it. But we still thought it was pretty darn good, don't you think, Michelle? Oh, yeah. I thought it was really entertaining. Um, you know, it was fun to watch. The characters were great. They had some extra characters or you know or just when you don't know the story that you know there's like oh this person wasn't somebody i was expecting to see and there there were some uh fun familiar faces you know obviously um you know the rock dwayne johnson and um you know emily blunt were fabulous in it but they had some other familiar faces in there and uh, it was just really interesting and fun and and i think you had mentioned uh reviews we're kind of comparing it alike to uh, the first Pirates of the Caribbean, that it's just a fun adventure to, to experience. And I thought that was a good analogy uh, when comparing it to this movie. Yeah, it's, it's not going to be this deep, groundbreaking, yeah. you know, Academy Award winning film. But if you just want a fun adventure, you know, with some good laughs, and especially if you love the Jungle Cruise and a lot of the humor and some of the uh, different Easter eggs from that that right. are kind of in it. Um, that they, they have all that, and it's great when the way they pepper them in uh, here and there. They're sprinkled throughout it, and right. it's really enjoyable. Uh, the chemistry between uh, The Rock, Dwayne Johnson, and Emily Blunt was just like we expected when we saw them mm-hmm. uh, appear at the D twenty three Expo a few years ago. You could just tell that those two worked well together, right. and they did it as well in this film. I think you'd agree with oh, that. Oh yeah, most definitely. They they were they were great. Uh, they played off of each other really well. You know, um, like you mentioned, if you, you know, can appreciate the Jungle Cruise attraction, you know, th- they didn't shower you with things, but it was just creative on how they included, you know, just some nods to the humor that's in that attraction and some of the sights in those attractions. Uh, I thought they did a good job. I really right. Fun movie, really fun movie. I really liked uh, Jack Whitehall. I know you did too, as mm-hmm. McGregor. Uh, he brought a lot of the humor oh to the movie. Oh my god, he was movie. amazing. Yeah, he was really good. Um, the one thing I have a little issue with was Jesse Plemons playing the the, the villain. Essentially, right. uh, he was just uh, which is Prince Joachim, or I don't know. He he said it in a weird way. They went yeah. Prince Joachim, and he's like, no, it's Prince Joachim, or something right, like right. that. Um, he had this weird German accent, you know, right. which was it was a little kind of, you know, because I've seen Jesse Plemons in a lot of different things, you know, so it was kind of weird to hear him do it. And he was a little odd, you know, but, uh, you know, overall it was fine. But what I really loved about this was that the the addition, and we, we talked about this in a, a previous show that this was going to happen, uh, but uh, James Newton Howard, who did the score for this movie, mm-hmm. um, talked with Metallica about adding one of their songs, right. uh, Nothing Else Matters into this, and you hear a little bit of it at the beginning, and it's great, and then there's this key moment within the film, which I'm not going to spoil it, but it really, and it's it's impactful and right. powerful and really, really great within it. Um, I was really impressed the way they were able to kind of work that into the the movie and it w- was really impactful yeah it really was um i i thought it really added to the story that was you know being told at that time and i know we've said that in a million of the the films disney does know how to tell stories and how they really um put a lot into making sure the music is is accompanying that storytelling effort yeah Uh, It was great. Totally enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. Enjoyed the film. It was a lot of fun. Looking forward to watching it over and over again because it's just a fun adventure. Especially, again, it's not something you have to think deeply about. It's just a good time. Um, I hope you check it out. I don't know. I give it, what, I I think four stars out of five, personally. I mean, it's not not for being this great, amazing film, but just for good, fun romp. Right, right. And I I think it would have been really a different experience too. I'm not saying give it more stars at that point, but you know, being able to do it in the theater, I, I just think we were just, when we were trying to look for tickets to go to we a theater while well, we were worn out, but we were also weren't sure how things were going to play out in terms of our, you know, getting back to town on the, when we wanted and you know, how we would feel once we we're here, would we be, you know, too tired or whatever. Mm-hmm. So um, maybe sometime in the future we might, be able to go out and see it in a theater too and experience that level of you know 
of being able to appreciate some of the sceneries. Yeah, maybe so. Mm -hmm. um, it did look like it would be great on the big screen. Yeah. Um, but the good thing about having Premier Access now we can rewatch it and not have to pay any extra for exactly. it whenever we want. So that's right. kind of nice because we will be rewatching it. Yes. So that's good. So uh, that's our review of Jungle Cruise. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. We'd love to know what you thought of that film as well. Now let's quickly get to the Disney stories of the week. I'm going to start with the list of Walt Disney World dining spots that will soon be reopening increased yet again this week. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go through these really quickly here. This from the Disney Parks blog. Uh, Yachtsman Steakhouse will soon be stoking the flames of their oak fired grills so we can uh, again savor the premium grain fed steaks and dry aged Duroc pork chop among other wonderful <laughs> dishes there uh, they, uh, booking, you can book reservations there now uh, it will be opening on August 5th so really coming up this yeah. week very soon all of these are well, not, almost all of these are opening up on August 5th also opening up on August 5th is uh, Toledo Tapas Steak and Seafood at Disney's Coronado Springs Resort. That's, uh, again, you can book that now, mm -hmm. opening up on the 5th. Uh, the great news, is for those of you who love a good lobster roll, or, you know, a good park lobster roll anyway, <laughs> uh, at the Magic Kingdom, is yes, Columbia Harbor House is opening up again this week on Yay. August 5th. Uh, I'm so excited to be able to go back and get a lobster roll or many of the other great mm -hmm. uh, seafood dishes that they have. And it's just kind of a nice place to go and take a you know, get out of the heat and enjoy a nice little seafood meal. Or right. Whatever. Especially if you can get a spot upstairs and right. just kind of. Don't tell everybody about the upstairs. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> Um, also, uh, if you like, uh, if you're heading over to the Disney's Animal Kingdom theme park, uh, Pizza Safari is reopening, and that will be actually tomorrow, as of we're recording this today on August 1st. Uh, tomorrow, August 2nd, that will be opening up again. So those are some restaurants cool. that are uh, coming back as right. uh, some of these dining spots are beginning to reopen gradually throughout Walt Disney World. Yeah, giving people more options is a great thing. Yeah, so that's that's good stuff. So uh, also moving on, we received more details of hot spots we're looking forward to hitting up next year aboard the Disney Wish. Mm. Again from the Disney Parks blog, they say there's more magic on the horizon for Disney Cruise Line guests ages 18 and older next summer aboard the Disney mm. Wish. Uh, starting with their outdoor oasis and senses spa and they say for the first time aboard a disney ship census spa will be feature a dedicated outdoor relaxation space so outdoor mm -hmm. dedicated relaxation space which is cool uh this open air oasis is a brand new extension of their signature rainforest experience which has been reimagined for the Disney Wish to provide even more ways to relax and rejuvenate. The Rainforest will introduce the fleet's first ice lounge, allowing guests to combine thermal therapies, which promotes both physical wellness and tranquility. It will also include guest favorite elements like heated ergonomic loungers, sensory spa showers, and sauna, steam, and dry chambers. So it sounds yeah. like they're even enhancing right. what is always already a great spa aboard these Disney ships. Right. A lot, of, a lot more experiences to have there to really just detach and relax. Right, for sure. So uh, another things that are coming in, I, it's going to be tough for me to decide which one of these I want to try out when we're on the ship mm. because there's a couple places where you can kind of get your hair done a little bit nicer <laughs> while you're on board. And both of them sound pretty cool to me because, you know, I'm all over the map with what things I like. Uh, for, we'll start with the Untangled Salon. Uh, which is a spot where you can let your hair down <laughs> and have it styled in any way you want in a light and airy environment uh, that is perfect for pampering. I like pampering. Uh, inspired by Rapunzel, this chic high-end salon will be adorned with shades of purple and gold, decorated with floating lantern light fixtures, and outfitted with custom cut metal privacy screens depicting Rapunzel's own paintings. Uh, one side of the space will uh, even gleam and glow with the golden light of a signature chandelier with, that evokes the iconic flower that gave her her hair that magical quality it had. In addition to haircuts and styling, the menu of services at Untangled Salon will include manicures, pedicures, teeth whitening, and <laughs> skin treatment. So that's a pretty cool place. Yeah, yeah. You'll need to let your hair grow like you did during the pandemic. I guess so. That would mm -hmm. be interesting. But if I can't get a spot in there, 
here. Maybe I'll want to go to Hook's Barbary. Mm. That's kind of cool, too. It will be a unique twist on a traditional European men's salon offering cuts, shaves, and nail and skin care. It'll be decked out in dark woods, handsome leather chairs, and ornate golden mirrors. The space will brim with the narrative details inspired by its namesake, Captain Hook. Uh, an inlaid wooden map of Neverland, uh, a hidden pocket watch, and of course, a hook, <laughs> to name a few things. Uh, a trio of seemingly nondescript lanterns will occasionally come to life with lighting and audio effects to signify Tinkerbell jumping from one fix to another. So it's really interactive and interesting as yeah, well. It sounds yeah. kind of cool. Love the theming. Yeah. Uh, but not only that, will Hooks Barbary provide salon and barber services, it will also boast the ultimate toast to a pirate's life, a hidden bar. Ooh. Yeah. And then they're talking, it's really speaking to me now. <laughs> Uh, this not-so-secret treasure trove of pre-prohibition bourbons, vintage whiskey, and port-aged rum and premium spirits will be a liquor enthusiast paradise, they say. Ideal for low-key hangouts, romantic date nights, and hosted tastings and special evening events. So it's kind of cool. It's gonna, it sounds like it's going to be kind of this barber shop during the day. Then at night, it kind of mm-hmm. transforms into this speakeasy kind of Very place. Very cool, yeah. yeah. That sounds kind of cool. I'm really interested to see how they pull all that off. Yeah, I'm sure it'll be amazing. Yeah. Uh, also, they'll have a Keg and Compass, which is a pub that celebrates the adventure and romance of the sea, designed in the rustic architectural style of the late 1800s. Um, that sounds pretty cool mm-hmm. as well. Uh, the casual setting will be perfect place to kick back and watch live sports, news, and major broadcast events while sampling a special selection of beers, including three custom craft brews available exclusively aboard the Disney Wish, along with an assortment of liquors, uh, wines, and cocktails. That sounds like a great spot. Yeah. yeah. Well, considering we made reservations for September, we'll be able to probably catch a good game or something. Yeah, that's a, that's a good point. Michelle always has the best points. <laughs> uh, but we're not done there yet. There's a couple more places we need to talk about. Nightingale's, which is a refined piano bar inspired by Cinderella's lyrical rendition of Sing Sweet Nightingale in the 1950 film, offering an extensive menu of fine wines, uh, bubblies, and handcrafted cocktails. Uh, classically modern with a soft metallic palette and uh, predominant design feature will be a glittering chandelier perched above the piano. That sounds like another that and we love spots like that to right. go and have a great show, you know, a little piano player yeah. doing some great numbers at night. Uh, sounds like a lot of fun. And finally, if you're looking for a New Orleans inspired good time, well, the Bayou will be your spot aboard the Disney Wish. Uh, you want to go down to the Bayou in an informal lounge themed to the princess and the frog flourishing with magnolia blossoms lily pads and a canopy of twinkling fireflies overhead this space will evoke the magical marsh where tiana and naveen take refuge in the film it it, it sounds another like a, another great location yeah, we are special. just mm-hmm. i think we're just gonna be popping from lounge to lounge <laughs> to lounge throughout our very short uh, uh, <laughs> Disney you might have Wish to drag trip. me out of the star wars that's lounge. true I'm sorry that's true <laughs> But all these spots seem like cool places yeah, to hit up. You know? definitely. And it seems like they got everything for any taste. Right, you know? exactly. So that's really cool. Yeah. So can't wait for the Disney Wish. Looking forward to that for next summer. So that's it for the Disney Stories of the Week. However, we never leave you without giving you some sort of tip that might help you on your next vacation. And as always, we start with Michelle. One, because she's wonderful, gorgeous, <laughs> beautiful, smart, hardworking. She has the best lists. She does the best research. <laughs> but she definitely has the very best tip. So let's get to it. Here's Michelle tip of the week all right mine's kind of a weird one <laughs> but it c- came from a uh, real life experience from this most recent visit and so let's say you have a situation occur like maybe you didn't have time to get your mani pedi done before visiting walt disney world and maybe one of your toenails is rubbing up against another toe in your shoes or or let's say you're wearing sandals or flip-flops and you bump a toenail and start breaking off or you bump your hand and and start tearing a a nail and you know if you pull the rest of it off it's going to be too short and really painful well as we've mentioned in the past the first aid stations are there for you to help save your trip from being you know something that could cause a lot of dissatisfaction and that was our experience this last trip. 
And I thought, all right, I'm going to go in there and probably just get a Band-Aid to, to hold it on a little longer. Um, but actually, they were able to provide a way to cut it off and not have my, you know, go through a lot of pain and a Band-Aid on top of that, that it just made a, such a great experience that I wasn't expecting that. And the people at the first aid station are just so sweet. They were great. Uh, helped you out tremendously. Yeah. And, you know, foot care, especially when you're at the parks and you're walking around for what will end up being miles oftentimes when you're in those parks is so important. Wear good shoes, wear good socks. Mm -hmm. And if you do have a foot issue, try and get it taken care of early because you don't want it to where you're limping around the right. park because that will really uh, give you a, a not the best visit on a day-by-day -day basis. And if it's, especially if it's early in your trip, it could impact your entire trip. Right. So... Anyways, first aid stations always can come through, uh, but you know, for whatever reason, if you have something go, you know, that you need help with, don't be shy to go in there. They're just very welcoming. Um, you know, for me, they took me aside. So I have a, a private area. So I, I wasn't just out in a, in a room in front of everybody and they just really came through and that's what they're there for. Yeah. Really good. So. Good tip. Michelle's tip, always <laughs> the best tip. Uh, my tip for this week, it's going to be something that we've talked about many, many times before. And it worked for us again this week is when you go and you get these reservations for these nice restaurants, you want to try to have the best spot as possible. And we got what we talked about, mm -hmm. a spot that we were really looking forward to within the Jungle Navigation Company Limited Skipper Canteen or just the Skipper Canteen from here on out. I'm not going <laughs> to say that over and over again. Um, you know, it, pinpoint where you want to stay. Look it up. Find out if you've never if you've never been in these re, um, restaurants before. A lot of times, some of these side rooms are quieter. Um, they have some more interesting things going on. Or if you've never mm -hmm. eat, dined in one of those rooms, it's just a, another way to kind of check out some interesting things about these restaurants. Um, but all you have to do is they will not necessarily place you in there if you just go up and say, "My time is there. I'm signed in." Okay, mm -hmm. you know. I wonder, you know, we're ready to go whenever you call us and we'll, you know, they'll, they may put you in the main hall. They may put you in one of these side rooms. Right. You never know for sure. But if you'd like to get one of those rooms, all you have to simply do is just ask them. If possible, I would like a seat in this room or that room, or there's a special table or a special right. booth. If it's available for us, and don't demand it. Just say, right. if it's available, we would love to have it. They would love to put you there if it's available for right. you. You may have to wait a little longer, but in when it's all said and done, a lot of times it's well worth it to wait a little longer to make that request because they will try to put you in the location that you want. And I, I, I can't remember a time when we have not been placed at least in the room that we've requested right. uh, when we've asked it. Like I said, yeah. we may have had to wait 10, 15, maybe even 20 minutes longer, but right. it's usually not that much longer. And we've got this great spot. And especially if it's a place like Blue Bayou Restaurant in Disneyland or the Sun and Hell Inn at uh, mm -hmm. the Mexico Pavilion, where, you know, being next to the water is a different experience right. than being in the rest of that restaurant. Um, I would suggest requesting those because really it, it, you're, you're bothering to, you, you got these reservations. You're in this restaurant for a reason. Mm -hmm. A lot of times just being next to the water or in these special locations are, it, they make all the difference to your dining experience. Right. And like you said, they really do want to try to help accommodate those requests. Now understand it can't always happen. You know, and especially if you're asking for specific tables, um, they do have to move people through. So if somebody, if it's, you know, like we did the butterfly booth and there's only one of those, um, if they had just sat somebody there, they probably don't want to make us wait an entire meal service because they do have to move us through to because other people are following us. So just understand it may not happen, but they really will do their best to try to accommodate your requests. And if they can't get you your exact request. They do try to provide something that can still be special. Yeah. Just ask. Right. You know, that's the worst thing you can do is ask, see what they can do. You're still going to probably get a pretty good meal at one of these restaurants. Um, but you may get it enhanced just a little bit more if you just go up there by simply asking. That's all you have to do. Right. And if there's a particular restaurant that you, you know, are wondering about, you know, is there a special location in it or a special dish? Feel free to reach out to us. Yeah, we'd love to help you out and let you know if, if we have dined there. If we mm -hmm. do know uh, that one location is better than another, we would, of course, be happy to answer that for you. Okay. So, that's it for this week. Next week, 
week, well, we're going to do another episode that's actually kind of a little bit of a tribute to Michelle's mother. And that is we are going to do our five favorite Disney role models inspired by one of Michelle's role models, her mother. That's right. So, you know, we're going to do from Disney films, and that could be the gamut of any film that falls under the Disney company umbrella. Yeah. So looking forward to that, and we'd love to hear yours as well and share them on the show. So uh, as for this week, we appreciate that you joined us in this this week. In the future, you can find us most everywhere you get podcasts. However, the very best place to find us is on our own website, HyperionAdventuresPodcast.com. And while you're there... You can sign up for our newsletter. Please sign up for the newsletter. Just another way to be involved in the Hyperion Adventures podcast world. Another way is to follow us on social media. We're on Twitter at Hyperion Podcast. Facebook, Instagram, and Pinterest at Hyperion Adventures Podcast. We do have a fun little Facebook group. It's the Hyperion Adventurers Facebook group. We hope you'll uh, join us there for a lot of positive Disney adventure fun. Right. And invite your friends. And please invite your friends. Uh, We have a YouTube channel. Please check us out there. Uh, Just do a search for Hyperion Adventures Podcast. Hit subscribe and you'll know whenever we have a new video. And if you ever want to contact us for any reason, please hit us up at our Gmail account, Hyperion Adventures Podcast at gmail.com. We love hearing from you. And we also ask that uh, tell a friend about our podcast. We we really appreciate that. Yes, uh, we appreciate it so much. Please tell a friend about our podcast. Just another way to spread the word that... uh, you enjoy this show that you think they might enjoy this show and to and, uh, make this uh, so much a larger Hyperion Adventure community. Correct. Yes. So that's it. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Hyperion Adventures podcast. We look forward to sharing some time with you again next week. Until that time, I'm Tom. I'm Michelle. And we hope that you have a magical week. Bye.